So some of you may have noticed in my first Diablo Immortal pay to win video, I made a comment below saying we haven't even talked about resonance, by the way, <laughs> because I honestly didn't think the data existed. I thought I didn't think I was going to be able to be making this video that I'm making right now until after release at the soonest. But I, I reached out, I emailed Jeff Bezos and he gave us some info about this system, uh, about this system that most of us will never, ever get to touch. Also, before I forget, big shouts out to Nakabon. I hope I <laughs> pronounced your name right. I'll put your uh, your name on the screen for helping me with this video. Big shouts out. Like, I'd, I would never have gotten any of this information for you guys without Nakabon. Thank you so much. First, I want to start off with some basics that I kind of failed to deliver in the first video. So, the very basics of pay to win. Legendary gems. They're the main source of pay to win in Diablo Immortal. They can be found in Elder Rifts, and only if you have Legendary Crests or Rare Crests, which you can use to empower the Rift. You can buy unlimited Legendary Crests in the shop with Eternal Orbs, a currency that must be paid for, for a 100% chance at a Legendary Gem Drop. There are virtually no sources for earning Legendary Crests for free. Uh, there are different rarities of Legendary Gems as well, from 1 star to 5 star. 5 star are extremely rare. Rare crests you can get and earn for free, usually about 3 to 5 per day, but they only have a 10% chance to get you a 1 star legendary gem drop and 2.5% chance to get a 2 star legendary gem drop, meaning you cannot get 5 star legendary gem drops from rare crests. So, most free to play players will never see a 5 star gem. So that part can be kind of confusing, but if we look at look back at this video that I just had playing while I was crafting some legendary gems, there was an echoing shade here with two out of five stars. So the five star gems can be two, three, or four, or five out of five stars, meaning this has the potential to be a five star gem, but it has the stats right now of a two star gem. If I do find another echoing shade that has three, four, or five out of five stars, I can use that one to upgrade the stars on this one though. though. So recently data miners actually dropped some data for the actual probabilities of legendary gems. As you can see here, one star for rare crest, one star is 10%, two stars 2.5%. And you can't even get five star gems from rare crests, which are the, the crests that you mostly get as a free to play player. This was actually news to me. I How I thought it worked was that when a legendary gem drops, it just basically rolls as a chance to drop of from the whole legendary gem pool. Of course, some will be more common than others, but um, yeah, this was news to me. So <laughs> like this, the pay to one is actually far, far worse than I actually originally thought because as a free to play player, you're most likely to never see a five star gem drop because you just basically never get legendary crests. Um, I mean, you do, you do get a few here and there, but um, yeah, a few isn't gonna get you uh, from these ch these chances here, <laughs> you'll probably you probably get one a year or something like that from the from these probabilities. But yeah, um, apparently there's a pity system too. But for every 50 legendary crests, you are guaranteed to get one five star, not not a five out of five star, but you know it could be one two out of five and, and so on. Um, the the funny thing about that is, for one hundred dollars, guess how many uh, legendary crests you get for one hundred dollars. 45. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, I mean, that's pretty standard practice in most of these games, but, um, so yeah, you're going to have to spend the, the most you can buy, the most orbs you can buy at once is, uh, is, uh, 7,200 or something like that, which gets you 45 legendary crests. So you're going to have to pay a little bit more than a hundred dollars if you want to get your, your pity gem, basically. All right, anyway, let's get to the Giga Whale pay to win system that we didn't talk about in the first video, Resonance. So we briefly touched on one aspect of Resonance in the first video, the awakening process. After you've awakened an item with a rank 10 gem, you are suddenly greeted by the Gemception system. You didn't think you were done yet, did you? You got your six legendary gems ranked up and you're set, right? <laughs> Welcome to Gemception. Long story short, you add gems to other gems to get even more bonus stats. 
Not just any gems, though. They have to be specific gems. This uh, trick shot gem slot, for example. I would never use a trick shot gem over here. I would never use a trick shot gem for my necromancer. But leave it to Blizzard to find a way to make you use specific gems that you would never in a million years consider using. Anyway, one star gems get two sockets for gemception, two star gems get three sockets, and five star gems get five sockets. So if you want to be a giga whale, you're going to be leveling up a total of 36 legendary gems. And remember, we mentioned these require specific gems, right? So yeah, you guessed it. Some of the gemception requirements. Uh, sockets require five star gems. I hope your credit rating is looking good for the next round of loans you're going to have to take out. For one star gems, you get up to 20 points of resonance, each point being directly related to the rank of the gem inside it. So we already have two rank 10 gems inside this one star gem, which gives us a base attribute bonus of 1%, and 1% that's the life and damage bonus. And then at level 10, we unlock damage taken decreased by 3% and damage taken while suffering loss of control decreased. And on this one in particular, we get primary attack damage increased and skill damage increased. So there are different resonant attributes depending on the gem that you awaken. Some are more offensive and some are more defensive. All right, now here's our image that we got from Jeff Bezos. Uh, we got resonance up to 30. We can sock it in three gems and a two-star gem. Um, one one star gem and two other two star gems and as you can see here there's a different attribute bonus based on the gem that's socketed in there so when you socket in a two star gem you get two percent at the max rank of 10 so 0.2 percent per, per rank and then the resonant attributes are the same jeff bezos tried to cuck us here by not showing us the 30 out of 30 resonant attribute but while I was actually making this video, this um, this image came in that we got from, hold on, let me find it. We got this image here from some Asian giga whale where we actually can, even though they're not unlocked, we can see the 30, 40, and 50 bonus. So the 30 is plus 2% block chance. Unfortunately, this, was, this is a defensive gem. Um, it doesn't appear that we have any five-star offensive gems. To, to look at those bonuses but yeah these bonuses yeah they're not that all that great two percent um block chance two percent damage reduction from melee and one percent damage reduction from all sources but the most important thing that we see here is that when you socket in a five star gem into another five star gem this one's only rank two and it's at two percent already whereas a rank <laughs> whereas a two star was at 2% at rank 10. So you can see here that we're gonna start getting m many more life and damage bonuses, all right? So uh, it, looks, it appears that you can socket in two five-star gems and three two-star gems into a five-star gem. <laughs> so you'll have, what is that? That's gonna be 10, 20, it'll be like 26% uh, life and damage bonus. So 26% life and damage bonus. But again, yeah, you're, you're still going to be paying t thousands and thousands of dollars to rank up two more five-star gems to put in your one five-star gem. And keep in mind, we're, we're only talking about one piece of equipment right now this whole time. We're, we're just talking about one. Like, if you want to have, if you want to have all six of your pieces filled in, um, yeah, we're talking this freaking bird, man. Yeah, we're talking, uh, yeah, total of 18 five-star gems to rank 10. And then not even, why don't you even bother trying to count all the other stuff? When you're when you're whaling this hard, you're getting all these two-star gems just as, like, the, you got millions of two-star gems lying around, so it doesn't matter how much how much it's going to take to level these up. But, um, yeah. The, the 18 five star gems that's you're looking at six figures at least <laughs> six figures i mean it might have if if rng isn't on your side you're probably you could be looking at seven figures to um to become the ultra giga mega whale and some people are using the term kraken i guess there's the, the a new tier of um that we have to put into some of these pay to win games because 
yeah, it's just been un- unheard of the amount of spending required in some of these games. So, yeah, I guess Kraken might be the new term. But, yeah, we're talking like another 150% life and damage bonus. Of course, it's going to cost you way, way more than that original uh, 300% life and damage bonus that you, that you went for. But, I mean, if you want to be the ultimate Giga Chad on the server, this might be what you're forced to do. So now let's talk about the worst part of this system. You didn't think we were done yet, did you? <laughs> so as you can see here, during the awakening process, the actual cosmetic appearance of your item changes. But it doesn't stop there. It's also built into the resonance system. So you remember those cosmetics I was showing you in the first video? Well, there's no coincidence that there's four at a time. As you can see, I mean, they, they tell you plain and clearly here, this is equipment adjusted by resonance. We don't know the details about how much resonance it's, is required to reach like the ultra giga chad badass looking motherfucker, but uh, we, let's just hope it doesn't require that you have 18 freaking and rank 10 five star gems. <laughs> but yeah, I think this is, this is personally the part that I hate the most. Like if you want to look like a badass, you're gonna you have to spend probably thousands of dollars like i'm gonna assume like to get to this level you're probably spending at least at least 50k or 100k i, I mean this is this is just an assumption like um why would they make it so hard to get to that level of, of resonance without like some payoff right so um yeah <laughs> this is this is the part i think um everybody is gonna kind of flip about oh my god that's that looks so sick <laughs> Jeez, look at like just compare just comparing like look at the the freaking free-to-play andy over here oh, <laughs> looking looking sad and pathetic <laughs> uh, oh god so yeah this is um yeah this is a thing this is i i think i personally think diablo immortal has, has taken pay to win to a level I've never seen before. I've played a lot of mobile games. I, I transitioned to mobile a few years ago when my first kid was born and I've seen a lot of shit. I've seen a lot of pay to win shit, but this right here takes the cake. I all this stuff that we've just talked about in this video takes the cake. All right. Now I have a question for y'all and specifically Asmongold, if he actually watches this video too, but well, when Asmongold talks about NFTs, he talks about how people have the power, like the, the power is with the consumer, and if we if we don't, you know, buy into the product, we, we that's not it's just never going to happen. Which kind of kind of goes against what he said about like my my trying to tell people that we can speak out against pay to win, like we have the power. So like, what what exactly m- makes us powerless in the in the pay to win conversation when in comparison to NFTs? I feel like I don't I feel like I don't agree with that, and I I'm just going to keep complaining as much as I can. Um, and if we just look at Diablo three, like, uh, they shut down the money machine in Diablo three, uh, Diablo three, when, uh, everyone complained about the real money auction house. Now, I mean, of course there's a lot of people that go in the comments and say, yeah, it's a mobile game. It's going to be pay to win. And yeah, there is some truth to that. And I'm, I'm not naive. I don't think that the, the pay to win is going to go away or anything. Um, it's definitely going to still be there and it basically has already been confirmed and you know what? It's, they can't change it anyway. They cannot because they actually kept all the money people spent in the game, in the beta, I mean. So, <laughs> like, uh, that would be a huge bait and switch if they actually um, th- if they actually changed completely how some of these pay-to-win aspects work. Like, it, they're holding, like, hundreds of thousands of dollars of of single per of single person's money some in some cases and if that person if like everything just got changed and they they fired up game at the game at release and was like okay what the hell am i supposed to do with these this hundred thousand dollars worth of of battle net bucks or whatever it's going to be uh yeah thanks blizzard but yeah so it's it's not i know it's not going to change the what i want is just that they they change it change the pvp because pvp believe it or not is a very very big part of this game this is not like the other diablo games there's very organized pvp in diablo immortal like like mmo style organized pvp so i'd 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 be happy if they just made the pvp like lost ark and basically normalized everything um 
let the whales have fun, like watching themselves go up on the leaderboards for challenge rifts or whatever, uh, all that bullshit. Just leave it out of the PvP. I don't want to be getting one shot by these guys um, every time I want to play PvP in the game. In the end, I just want what's best for the game. I do really love Diablo Immortal. I've played every Diablo game, and I can honestly tell you that Diablo Immortal is my favorite Diablo game. It, it, and that's probably because I'm a little bit biased because I do love MMOs. I, I am a PC guy at heart. I mean, if you just look at all, all this crap behind me here. Um, oh, yeah, I love PC games. I love MMOs. And I love Diablo. And like Diablo Immortal, Immortal is like the perfect combination of, of my favorite action RPG and an, MM, an MMO. So yeah, I, I love the game. I want, I want what's best for the game and the community. I hope it doesn't get killed by all this pay-to-win bullshit. Um, and I'm going to keep speaking out against it. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope you feel better informed about the resonance system at least. And thanks for all your subs. Like so many, I've gotten so many new subs. Um, thanks from all the Asmongold viewers for all the subs and all that good stuff and liking the video. And yeah, in the end, I'm just trying to make Diablo Immortal a good game. Because I know Diablo, I mean, Diablo 4 is coming, and you know, people are saying, yeah, just wait for Diablo 4, it's going to be on PC, there won't be any pay to win, which is probably correct, but Diablo 4 is also not going to be an MMO like Diablo Immortal is. So I still think I might prefer Diablo Immortal just for the MMO aspects. Anyway, that's it for this video. Peace, and GG's, we'll see you next time in the next one.